Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you my process for creating this product animation in Blender and a little bit of Adobe Illustrator. We'll start with modeling the cream tube with some basic modeling, then texturing and finally the simulation and animation. This tutorial is kind of for intermediate artists that know their way around Blender. Hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to learn one or two new techniques that you can use. With our reference image imported, I added the cylinder and reduced the vertices to 24 because I do not need so much details and I'm going to add the subdivision modifier later. What I'm doing here is just trying to get the form of the cream tube by extruding the cylinder along the z-axis and scaling at the appropriate places. I'm adding vertices by adding an edge loop and beveling it with Ctrl B and then for the side, I'm scaling the vertex loop to give form to the cream tube. I'm also scaling the top part along the Y axis to create an even tight profile here. I added the cube and scaled it on the X and Y axis to match the cube tube. Added a loop cut and increased that to 55. Select the loop and bevel it. I deselected the top and bottom faces and extruded the remaining faces. I added the subdivision modifier to smoothen it out and scale appropriately. For the tube cover, I added the cylinder with 64 vertices, added the loop cuts and separated them based on selection by pressing P. Now I use a knife to, to cut out this opening. Select the faces, extrude and the scale. I filled that face for the bottom part of the cover using the I hot key and then deleting the face just trying to add more vertices around the edges now i'm adding loop cuts with ctrl arrow to tighten up the edges of the mesh where it is needed then i bevel the top face to round it off i did some basic cleanup after i added the subdivision modifier deleted the faces and used the grid fill feature to fill the face and i did the same thing for the other part of the cover Bevel this part of the tube and added a subdivision modifier to smooth it off and tightening all edges where needed. I started by creating the wrap in Adobe Illustrator, just trying to match the reference image as much as I could. And also matching the font and trying to give everything the proper alignment. If you need this material, the link will be in the description below for you to download it. After I was done with that, I headed over to Blender to start giving the mesh the material. After splitting the view, I changed the 3D viewports to the shader editor. I gave the top cover and this part a plastic material by reducing the roughness to almost zero. For the body of the tube, I added an image texture that I created from Illustrator and connected it to the base color. I then head over to UV editing tab to fix the proportions. I selected the whole mesh and then press U project from view and scaled it to fit the texture that was added. Now what I'm just doing is to adjust the projections properly for a proper fit and selecting the remaining part of the mesh and scaling the mesh only where the green color is at. After this, I added an HDR right to my scenes for better lighting to see how the material acts. For the tube body, I'm trying to enhance the materials by adding a gamma node connected to the image texture and the principles BADF and give it a value of 1.1. I also added a bump node and connected the color from the image texture to the height and reduced the strength to something like 0.1. I also reduced the roughness on the principles BSDF. On the render properties menu, I made the background transparent by going to film and click transparent. Another color management changed from standards to AGX. This feature comes with 4.0. Then some finishing touches before heading over to the cloth simulation. Now I just added an empty and scaled it to fit the tube and parent everything to the empty. For the cloth simulation, I added two planes. One for the clots 
and one as a collision object. I scaled the collision plane to be bigger than the cloth plane and brought it down below the cloth plane. I also brought the cloth plane into edit mode and subdivided it by right clicking and hitting subdivide and increase the subdivision in the context menu to 35. At this point, I added my camera to my shot. This was the first shot I had in mind with the camera looking from the side. I got back into edit mode and selected a couple of vertices and after I selected them, I went to the vertex menu tab and created a new vertex group and I sent those vertices to that group in order to pin them. I also added the collision physics property to the larger plane to serve as the ground and after doing that, I added the cloth physics property to the plane. Then down at the shape tab, you add the vertex in the pin group. I then added the vertex in the force field menu and bring it down to the cloth for the spiral effects. I increase the strength of the vertex and hit your space bar to see if it works. I added the subdivision modifier on the cloth to smoothen it out and also a solidify modifier for more thickness as that was what I was going for. Just a little thickness of 0.004 because I didn't want a thick cloth. This vertex selection was what got me what I wanted after assigning it to the vertex group that I created before. I then adjusted the vertex strength value and ended up settling for 1.5 as that worked perfectly. Why this was happening was because I didn't turn on self collision. To fix that, I went to the plot physics properties, scroll down to self collision, turn it on and added the vertex group there and I got the force that I wanted. Now I'm arranging my scene a bit trying to frame my shots properly. You can experiment with different vertex selections to see what it might give you. For the fabric material, I split my workplace into two halves and switched from 3D viewport to the shader editor. I created a new material for the clothes. I copied the color of the tube to the base color of the clothes. Taking the roughness to zero would make it shiny and at one make it rough. And I left it at that because that was what I was going for. I then added the magic texture and the bump node connected to the normal of the principal BSDF. I activated the node wrangler add-on and hit Ctrl T with the magic texture selected. Instead of generated, I use the UV plug and check if my UVs are perfectly aligned. I increase the scale of the magic texture to 400 to give a that fabric look. The distance of the bump node to 0.07 and reduce the, and reduce the strength of the bump to 0.5. I'm going to add a wave texture using the mapping vector to the vector and duplicate the bump node. Pressing Ctrl Shift left click will preview the node for you to see what's actually going on under the hood. I increase the scale of the wave texture to 150 and changing this can change the rotation of the waves. And I increase the strength to 0.04 and the distance of the bump node to 0.07. I then added the noise texture, duplicated the bump node again, bumped the scale to 330 and the distortion to 3.6 to add distortion to the noise material. I then added the color ramp in between the noise texture and the bump node to control the amount of noise that goes into the bump node and then increase the strength to 0.867. I also played with the section of the wave texture a bit as well as the detail scale to 4.5. This is the node tree for the fabric texture. I added a spotlight to the scene and I didn't like the way the fold cast a shadow. So I changed the camera perspective using Alt Control Zero to view the scene from the top view, which was my final shot. I then added an area light to the left side and I was trying different lighting setup to see what works. I then added another area light from the top both of them has a power of 1,500 each. Here, I'm trying to find the right placement of the lights and then a test fender and this looks perfect. The animation wasn't a complex one as I just want the cream tube to follow the spin of the fabric. 
I turn the shader editor to the timeline to the timeline so that I can insert keyframes. I place the starting point at 72 because that was where the animation of the fabric start to come to life and then the end frame at 200. Hitting I and selecting location and rotation and then to the last frame. Rotate the cream tube and hit I and location and rotation again and when you hit play that's your animation. I also animated the camera to move back a bit using the same process as before but using just the location option. I use cycles to render it out with 300 samples counts and noise threshold to 0.5 because it will take forever if I use a higher set and this too took almost 3 minutes to render. Remember we set the view transform to HGX and the view transform to high contrast before. Set your frame rates of your animation to 30 FPS and then select where you want your animation to go as that will be exported as an image sequence. Create a folder. Leave the other thing as default and then hit render animation. I hope you find this video useful and if you want to see more content like this, leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching.